squish, try and squish, yeah, I'm going to say squish the movie thing over one side, so it's Hello, we are uh, Strategic Management Group A, and this is our uh, Coca-Cola bottling company case. Um, I'm Ben Hill. I'm Sam McKinstry. And we've also got <laughs> Paul Seaton here. And I'm Paul Seaton. All right, so Coca-Cola was started in 1986 by John S. Pemberton. Uh, back then it was sold in single servings in uh, uh, candy stores, uh, convenience stores out of a beverage fountain for five cents. When they first started they were averaging a, about nine servings a day. Two years later he began to sell rights to other people giving them the opportunity to uh, also serve Coca-Cola at other uh, beverage fountains outside of his immediate area. Um, but over time the demand grows, grew for Coca-Cola to be bottled and distributed elsewhere um, in 1899, two businessmen from Chattanooga purchased the exclusive rights to bottle and distribute the Coca-Cola formula for only one dollar. Um, in 1902, uh, the Coca-Cola Bottling Company was formed and uh, John B. Harrison began, began distributing and bottling the Coca-Cola product in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, around 1916 is when they, became, uh, they came up with their contour bottle, which would distinguish them from other beverage companies and competition, and kind of set Coca-Cola aside. Uh, today, the Coca-Cola Bottling Company bottles about 300 different brands and flavors, and uh, studies show that about 1.9 billion Coca-Colas are enjoyed worldwide every day. All right, moving on to the strategy. The Coca-Cola Bottling Company uses a focused, low-cost provider strategy, meaning that they uh, generate revenue through cost containment and efficiency. They run low margins, but make up for that with a high volume of sales. That makes them focus is that they're selling to a specific market and not just anyone. Um, they also cut out a step in their value chain uh, by owning their own trucks to distribute Coca-Cola with, and um, they even will haul other things back with them once the uh, trucks are empty just to remain, uh, continue to generate money. All right, moving over. So again, my name is Paul Satan and I'll be going over the driving forces. Uh, first, driving force is increasing public interest in healthier alternatives to traditional soda. This is leading people away from the high fructose uh, ingredient which is in, included in most uh, soda beverages. Next is the rising cost of domestic wages. This is causing large companies uh, to have higher expense wages. Uh, the third one, growing concerns toward the use of recyclable and biodegradable materials. This is applicable to the actual bottles and uh, how people are becoming more interested in ways of uh, reusing them. The final one, developing technology is making constant improvements possible through new advancements and discoveries. All right, moving on to key success factors. The first one is unique relationship with Coca-Cola allows for special opportunities. This is obvious uh, as the bottling company is specially related with Coca-Cola. They have the opportunity to use uh, Coca-Cola's massive uh, influence in the marketplace. The next one is generally standardized product shapes and sizes. Makes it easy for new products in the future. This is things such as the, the average can and the two liter, uh, which are some of their most popular sizes. Um, even if they were to introduce new products, they'd be able to use these bottles for the new beverages. Third one, a wide variety of products offered allows for uh, focus on seasonal bestsellers. So their large variety of products allows them to kind of alter their sales depending on the season. In the summer, they sell more types of uh, Gatorade and Powerade and things like that. And in the winter, they sell more sodas. The final one is highly automated production system generates savings in the long run through reduced wage expenses. These are things such as their uh, advanced machinery which they use to uh, automate the process of bottling the beverages. Thank you. All right, so for their SWOT analysis, um, obviously their strengths, their biggest strength is the exclusive rights to the Coca-Cola formula. Um, not even Coca-Cola themselves has the right to um, sell 
their products to anyone but the Coca-Cola bottling company. Um, another is brand recognition, um, customer loyalty to the product. Um, they have a diverse product line and a incredible amount of consumers. As far as weaknesses go, um, a major um, weakness is health concerns related with the Coca-Cola products. Um, a lot of people are tending to steer away from those as of recently. Um, they're very largely dependent on the Coca-Cola name and also um, some foreign policies and laws in other countries that may affect production of Coca-Cola outside of the U.S. market. Um, their opportunities, there's pretty low competition and a very large market to serve. Um, they began bottling for Dunkin' Donuts and uh, McDonald's coffees, which is another um, way for them to kind of branch out from just the Coca-Cola. Um, another opportunity would be to update their factories, equipment, and bottling procedures. They've been using these same factories and plants since uh, the 1970s, so that could possibly make production go a little bit smoother. Their threats, um, healthier substitutes, uh, reusable bottles like Yeti's making uh, Nalgene bottles. Um, also, water enhancers like Mio or Crystallite, anything like that, that would not make somebody have to go out and purchase a beverage from them when they can just do it at home. Also, um, at home drink makers like there's at home soda fountains and Keurigs and stuff along that line that may move people in a different direction instead of going and buying from the Coca-Cola bottling company. Hi, I'm Sam McKinstry. Um, I will be talking to you about the key financials um, for Coca-Cola uh, Bottling Company Consolidated. Um, for 2013 to 2016, um, their ROA stayed very steady. Um, their investments were used strategically for uh, for company operations. Um, their biggest jump was from 2014 to 2015 at about 2%, which doesn't seem like much, but in the industry, uh, uh, any percent increase is very important and key to success. Um, this was due to more income with less capital investments used, so they're making more money while still being able to retain more of their actual investments. Um, next, I have their uh, return on equity. Um, so from 2014 to 2015, um, they actually had an increase of 10%. Um, their equity investments were used to produce profit and, and bring in more revenue income. Um, other than that, um, their years were very steady with the ROE. So next is their gross profit margin from 2014 to 2016. They actually decreased around 5%. Um, this was due to the inefficient production and pricing point, um, which comes with the competition of having to um, compete and produce at lower points. Um, overall, they stay pretty consistent as well um, at this point, meeting, uh, uh, meeting the demand that's uh, required for this company. Um, next is their operating profit margin. So from 2013 to 2016, again, they were very steady. Um, the brand awareness allows them to stay competitive within, within the market, um, which allows them to hold a top spot in their beverage industry. Um, and lastly, here we have their net profit margin uh, from 2014 to 2015. Um, again, they had consistent growth, um, around 3% increase, um, which again may not seem like a lot, um, but any growth in this industry is very important. Um, their growth came from the covering expenditures while also retaining revenues at the same time. Um, next, I'm going to talk about the strategic concerns. Um, the first strategic concern was their consumer concern about health risks. Um, which nowadays a lot of consumers are seeing the health risks and um, sugared beverages. Uh, next, we have their short-term contracts with their retail customers, such as Walmart, Kroger, and Food Lion. Um, due to these three, they don't sign long-term contracts, so it's always up in the air whether or not they're going to be able to re-sign their three largest retail customers. Um, next, we have their increased costs, um, shortages of materials for their cans and bottles. Um, in order to, uh, to get the price point that they're needing, um, they have to be able to uh, negotiate with their suppliers, but due to their suppliers becoming consolidated together, it's harder to actually 
negotiate a, a decent price point for them, um, which makes, it, makes them unable to maintain the quantity needed for their demand. Next, we have their strong competition on the cost for lower uh, product pricing. So with the more competition, they're actually having to uh, lower their price point, uh, which hurts them in the long run with their share in market sales. Um, and lastly, we're going to have their external advertising, um, their market spending, and product innovation. The cost of advertising is becoming more expensive. Um, also, to market their product, their new products. Um, um, with the decrease in funding, um, they are actually unable to advertise less, um, causing consumers to not be able to see the new products they're bringing out and, um, and, and what they're bringing out in future years. Um, so overall, the product awareness and sales um, would decrease overall. All right, on to recommendations. Um, while we were learning about Coca-Cola, it seems like a lot of their problems came from being so dependent on the Coca-Cola name. The health concerns that are corresponded with Coca-Cola drives a lot of customers away. Um, by simply just changing the name of the company and becoming their own brand instead of being so dependent on Coca-Cola, they could be uh, just a, their own bottling company, not just a Coke bottling company. This could attract plenty of new consumers, um, give them a lot of opportunity to branch out in other ways. Um, it would be fairly cheap since they're not, they don't do too much marketing as it is. Simply they could just um, market this through word of mouth and letting their um, customers know through email or a newsletter that the change is being made. They wouldn't have to really change anything internally but their actual name and logo. Um, yeah, so the benefits for this would absolutely outweigh the cost that it would take this company to rebrand themselves. All right, on top of the rebranding of their name, um, we decided that uh, starting a new campaign initiative uh, would be the best bet to uh, um, get the word out about their, uh, about their products. Um, first, we would actually advertise and market on college campuses, hitting the uh, students, the most active uh, population that we have, um, allowing them to see what's out there, what's new for Coca-Cola. Um, next, we'd have actually setting up points in their retail customers, such as Walmart, Kroger, and Food Line, to reach the customers that are buying, such as parents um, that are buying for their kids. Um, and lastly, um, just overall advertising campaign, um, the, um, a health initiative that shows people that they are trying to hit the point where it, they're meeting the health that people are wanting and being able to uh, market their new products overall to get the word out so every customer and consumer can hear about it and want to try it. All right, and our final recommendation has to do with sort of a, a build on to the uh, name cans that Coca-Cola has already used as one of their campaigns. So what it is basically is it's a development of a new Coca-Cola can that has a clear bottom with a random positive short description title written inside of it. And so the way it would work is once somebody uh, opens up a can of Coke and drinks it, they're able to flip it upside down and look inside of the bottom and see a title. This would be a descriptor such as uh, the awesome or the party animal or something like that which could be added on to the name can so they would almost work together uh, to make the descriptor more meaningful and interesting and also make it sort of uh, a fun game to try and collect different combinations and things like that. <clears throat> so as I kind of mentioned it would be fun for consumers to use in conjunction with the name cans uh, and it's also a new type of product that's not really been seen before at all in the can. It's a new uh, feature that would draw new interest towards the Coke products, just simply by the fact of it never having been seen before. And finally, it would add a heightened sense of meaning uh, behind drinking every behind drinking a, a Coke. So uh, it adds an extra level of interest and uh, meaning towards drinking the, the product. Uh, and it was also helped to uh, promote uh, the purpose and the benefits behind what Coke stands for. Thank you.